Hi, I'm Stéphane Algatz, Senior Climate Advisor here at the World Bank Group. And today I want to share another set of key data that is underpinning the crucial conversations taking place at Glasgow at the COP26. You are going to hear a lot about targets and pledges and climate action at the COP. Let's look at the data to understand just how important those promises are. So we're going to examine the relationship between policies, commitments, investments, and what that means for greenhouse gas emissions and ultimately for global warming itself. The good news is that we're seeing a lot of action. Governments, cities, businesses begin to make meaningful pledges and large investments to reduce emissions and transform the economy to make it aligned with the goals of the Paris Agreement, but also to achieve our broader goals in terms of sustainability, circular economy, and a green and inclusive development. So how could that change the story of climate change? Well, this orange line here shows the historical emissions up to now. But what happens next? Well, even with current policies in place, and they are meaningful, but the world is still projected to warm by up to 2.7 to more than 3 degrees by the end of the century. It's much better than without those policies in place. We've made a lot of progress, but it's still not what the goals of the Paris Agreement are. Now, we're not without hope, because many countries, cities, and, and businesses have promised to act faster. For instance, 68 countries have committed to achieve net zero emissions uh, by 2050 or 2060. It's about 61% of global emissions. If they deliver on those commitments, then emissions will go down faster. And we will reach something between 2 and 2.4 degrees of warming by the end of the century. It's much better, but it's still more than the objectives of the Paris Agreement. And for those pledges and targets to translate into actual emission reductions, there is still an important step. A lot of policies will have to change, and a lot of investments will need to occur. All of these measures, policies, and investments will pay for themselves over the long run, either because they prevent impacts of climate change or because they can deliver short-term benefits like lower energy spending thanks to energy efficiency or maybe like lower air pollution thanks to the use of renewable energy and electric vehicles instead of fossil fuels. But still, all of these changes will require massive investments and trillions of dollars of financing per year over the coming decades. By our estimates, low- and middle-income countries will need to spend at least 4.5% of their GDP into their infrastructure system to make them resilient and sustainable. And if we want to achieve the more ambitious goal of 1.5 degree, even more ambitious commitments and even more drastic climate action will be needed to cut emissions further, like the green line is showing you here. So I hope this figure gives you a balanced view of our situation today. On the positive side, we made amazing progress in the last five to 10 years in terms of commitment and policies. On the challenging side, the gap between where we are and where we need to be to achieve our own objectives are still very big. Thank you for watching and do look out for the other data presentations in this special series.